can't sing nor can he run he's black paint splattered on the sun green rocky road promenade in green tell me who do you love tell me who do you I'm delighted to have the McGarrigals, Kate and Anna, and uh, assorted members of their family on the show today. I haven't seen you for a while. How are you? Good, good. This is a wonderful new thing. Isn't it? <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> it's a new album. It has about a million cuts on it. I guess that's why you call it The Hour. It's actually, it's 68 minutes. Is it 68 yeah. minutes? So I don't know whether you want to know this or not, but yesterday I'm driving along the road and I'm listening to the CD and it gets to Sweet Little Alice Blue Gown. I lose it completely, weeping, because I'm a suck anyway. But you really and truly, my grandmother used to sing that song, and it just did me in. I know. How did you come our, to choose it well, for this? Well, our mother used to sing it, and Lily oh. interprets it on the record. She's like the youngest grandchild, but it was our mother's party song. That's what she sang. That's party. what my grandmother used to sing, and I guess it was uh, her era, too. It's such a beautiful tune, yeah, isn't it? It's a lovely song. I yeah. guess I can't request it, and can it, I? Uh, uh, apparently, though, the this, this song is done in a fairly straight way by Lily, my yes. daughter. But I think it, it was a music hall song, and I think it was a little tongue-in-cheek, right? The fact that she oh, that disdained she, all sort of... Yes, yeah, don't look at me. Well, my mother had all the hand motions. <laughs> yeah, you have to do that. Yes. frown. She yeah. would do that, yeah. <laughs> it's a very funny song. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, I just love it. Yeah. And how did you come to choose it in particular? Did everybody get their uh, hands in on choosing tunes? Because you got a Stephen Foster tune in there. And... Uh, well, back, back when we had kind of planned on that, just because we have tapes of my mother doing that when she's about 85 years old, videotapes. And like we gave her a blue dressing gown one day, and, and Janie on was Christmas. there. At Christmas. And Janie got on the piano, and she, we had And she just started it. in? Yes, yeah, so it was very And we were all in the kids and grandchildren <laughs> around. So, I mean, that song was, we particularly chose to put that one on. There's something charming about uh, the amalgamation of all your families. I mean, it is, it's, it is amazing that uh, you all work together. I mean, I'm, maybe some of you are not all working together, but, you know, it's great to have your kids sometimes on the road with you, don't you think? Yes. I think it's I think it's wonderful because yeah. we have our two daughters Martha and Lily, and but I don't know if they wouldn't rather be working separately with some younger people. Well, or but on they their do. They they. Uh, we love it. Yeah, I mean because Martha's just uh, been in Japan with your son Rufus. That's right. Going to be yeah. here tomorrow. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of fun to have them singing too and not you know going into like dentistry or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be nice dentist, to have a like dentist. Like a Jesus dentist. <laughs> Yeah, really, and that's what I think too. Couldn't yeah. you be a dentist or an like, accountant? Accountant. A doctor. Yeah, that'd be good. Doctor, yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah. but no, they got, they want to get on the stage. Yeah, right. No, I think uh, yeah. No, actually, I mean, it's kind of. I I was. Uh, 
when uh, when their father, Loudon Wainwright, who was on the record, uh, right. had come up to see the headmistress of the school in Montreal when Martha was at the school called The Study. And he said, well, maybe she would like to become a, I don't know, a doctor, a lawyer or something. And Mrs. Marshall, who was the headmistress, said, Mr. Wainwright, 90% of children do what their parents do. Really? Yeah. This is terrifying. I know. <laughs> don't I know. do it. <laughs> so you have to start thinking. But did your parents do it? No. Uh, no, I think we're the first generation, but they, they were definitely, my father's father was the first movie projectionist in Canada, and, and they were from Well, Saint one John. of the first. Well, he was, it said in the book that Those your husband wrote that he was the first. Yeah, they're <laughs> arguing. No, no, I mean, he was an early, yeah, projectionist in uh, Charlottetown. Right? Yeah. And uh, I think the kids, his children, my father and his siblings, would sometimes perform little songs on stage beforehand, so I think... You know, they were, I mean, they weren't really on the stage, but uh, I think they wanted Unlike to. Unlike you two. That's well, right. how old were you two when you first sang together for money? Oh, in our mid-20s. Well, that, no. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, for, oh, sure. we it's had a record deal corner. when we were in our late 20s. Mm -hmm. well, we didn't sing before that, as you and Kate No, well, we used to have a group called the Mountain City Four. We got paid $10 once. I remember getting $200, and that was oh. in the 1960s, and that was, was that a lot Bishops? of money because we're a fairly good group. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> At Bishops? <laughs> Probably, because we, we were two. There were, Mountain City Four could have had anywhere from four to ten people in it. And, but Anne and I were the, the cons, we were the two girls. I mean, there were di the men would change sometimes, but we were also. Oh, isn't that always the way? I know, they come and go. <laughs> they come and they go. But uh, I'm just trying to determine when you found that sound, that when the two of you sang together, you sound like no one else. In the, in the, in the studio for the first record, we didn't know we had a sound. Mm -hmm. And it was developed, I think. I mean, we started to sing things like, and we'd say, well, are there any empty tracks? And they'd say, well, Sure, and Anna will say, can I try a part on here? And I think we essentially developed yeah. that sound on the first record. Wretched I mean, we didn't excess, know we you had have, it. You, know, yeah. hmm? you have 24 tracks, and I said, it's the, you just want to fill up all of them with yeah. the sounds of <laughs> your you own voice. Wretched excess? That's what yeah. I said, yes. <laughs> and are you guys still, where do you live now? I live in eastern Ontario, mm -hmm. in Alexandria. I live in Outremont, which is in Montreal. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I know where Outremont is. Yeah. And so how, how often, just to, to rehearse and to record, do you see each other, or are you in each other's face all the time still? We see each other a lot. Yeah. I mean, a couple of times a week. It's, it's kind of, it's... And talk on the phone about six times. But most of you see each other, we go shopping for bread and clothes and stuff like that. It's kind of um, has mythic proportions, your relationship, I think, that they're so close, so tight, so... Yeah, and have produced so much. Really, and have parents. children that actually are nice and talented and sing. And how good could it get? It's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. I think we're lucky to have each other. I think you yeah. are too. Because yeah. it's a hard business. Yeah. And there's some lovely parts to it, but there's some downsides. And I wouldn't do it without her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it without <laughs> Anyway, I just, this is just a beautiful yeah, thing. And you're, you. you're going to sing another song, but I guess it's not going to be Alice Blue Gown, but never mind. I'll make George play it another day. Maybe I'll learn the little gestures. <laughs> Thanks. Take that, I'll be back in a bit.